some really good ones. So Magotes put their first news release out since going public this week. Um, this is from the, the Vicuña uh, project or Philo Sur project rather. Um, and this project, if you remember, is immediately like seamlessly attached to the Philo exploration story. So you can see on the map on the right, Philo de Sol, which is uh, Philo uh, mining, which is uh, two point or three billion Canadian, I think. And you can see the geophysics and the chemistry uh, go straight down onto Magotes. Do I think they might have a discovery or two? Heck yes. Okay, very simple thesis to be had right here. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, now the company announced their first data uh, from work they did prior to going public. So they, they were actually doing some work, I think, back earlier this year. They wanted to go in and drill a bunch and unfortunately, they only got two holes drilled and one half of a hole uh, before the snow chased them off the hill. So they got 2,185 meters drilled. Uh, there's a couple holes in for assay. We'll see what those assays look like. They don't have them yet. Uh, but this news release mainly talks about some very technical exploration success that they've had on some of their targets, uh, like Philo Algenita and this Rincon uh, target and so, so forth. Um, I don't want to take 20 minutes to go through the technical bits. This is a very dense, we'll call it technically dense uh, news release, but I'm going to give you a little bit of a flavor to spoon feed a few points to, to take away. Go to the next slide. Okay, this uh, this comes from um, the Colorado uh, target. The, uh, I believe it's Nueva Colorado target. And if you want to reference things, you just go back a couple slides. Okay, but um, these are pictures of outcrop and on the top and then down below out of um, core um, from the property. And I'm telling you, uh, actually, a lot of those might be core as well. Uh, never mind. Anyway, there's some, basically, there's some rock samples and there's some core photos in here. Um, the linear ones are also core, sorry. Um, look, guys, any geologist that looks at this stuff gets excited, okay? You see rock that's been hammered, okay, volcanic rocks, porphyries that have been hammered, lots of silicification, meaning hydrothermal silica, quartz that's been flooded into the rock, but also gobs and gobs and gobs of sulfides. Pyrite, chert, but calcopyrite, that's a copper-bearing sulfide. Uh, you see blobs of bornite. Uh, who doesn't love bornite, Kevin? Uh, you see blobs of <laughs> uh, cobalite as well, which is another copper sulfide, okay? What they're trying to say here is, I, in my view, they're saying, hey, we've, we're near something because look at all this stuff we've seen. Did they really discover something just yet? I don't know because the assays aren't back, but we'll find out soon. Um, if anything, this is a near miss is my, my best guess. Or otherwise, I think that knowing the people, I think they'd be beating their chest going, oh, we've made a discovery, you know, blah, 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 blah. I think we're going to see some very interesting results albeit, um, you know, high level anomalous or, you know, maybe more than that, maybe incipient discovery level type stuff, we'll call it, okay? So my view, good. Thumbs up. Go to the next slide. Uh, up here at uh, Filo and Alienita, uh, they found an area where there's this mineral called alienite. And everybody might say, who cares about alienite? Well, uh, alienite happens to be a mineral that forms from very acid fluids at a very shallow level above a porphyry, okay? So what they're saying here is they found a gigantic, what we call lithocap, that's got alginite scattered all through it, and it's created by uh, SO2-rich fluids, so sulf sulfuric acid-rich fluids that have risen off of a porphyry in depth and just absolutely cooked the rock, okay? So they are trying to say, hey, we found an epithermal cap or a lithocap to uh, a likely porphyry below. This is also quite exciting. What might be in this? Well, oftentimes the gold actually kind of moves up into this part of the system. So I wouldn't be surprised if when, when and they did get some results. I think they have some uh, assays, uh, rock chips from here that are pretty good in gold. But it, it's really good indication. Again, thumbs up. Let's go to the next slide. Okay. Um, and then this is... Uh, this is Philo Sur uh, Project uh, Cam Camino. Um, this is a little bit further south, but what they found in this Rincon uh, geophysical target, you can see the blue labels there. They were putting a road up 
And lo and behold, they found <clears throat> extensive stockwork veining in this road <clears throat> that I would say, looking at the texture and the style of the veining, is probably just slightly towards the top of a productive porphyry system. Okay, and not only that, but they have assays and stuff here that support that. Okay, but to actually see the stockwork veining in the road cut gives you a very high confidence that there's probably something brewing right below there. Not and not too far, right? maybe two or three hundred meters too. Uh right under their nose. Okay, so once again, very good, good, good results. Go to the next slide. Okay, we got to move here because I got a few more. <laughs> there was a big week this week. Okay, so PJX uh, announced they got the drill permit. Long story short, we are now going to find out if PJX, which I talked about back in April, I think early April, um, if they have a Sullivan type discovery. Okay, Sullivan being one of the largest SEDEX deposits of zinc and lead and silver on Earth. It's up in British Columbia. These guys are just a few kilometers away from Sullivan. They found in outcrop rock that looks identical to Sullivan, and now they're going to go drill it. Okay, this is one of the most exciting drill stories I've seen uh, for in a base metal space for many years, and I'm very anxious to see what they hit. Okay, so we have a drill story to look forward to. Go to the next slide. Okay, Intrepid put out uh, news this week. I believe these are the last assays they have from their drill program. They drilled, I think, 24 holes or something. I can't read all that small stuff. Don't worry about it. I can't. You know, and I don't want to take the time, but um, you can see the results. They got some very good assays here, uh, long runs of, of good values, like 0.53 gram gold over 112 meters. Um, silver is pretty high, too, but also the, the copper numbers are quite good in there, 1.5%, okay? But inside of that, there's some even higher-grade subminerals. Okay, now, um, everybody's been screaming about, where is that cross-section? I want to see this thing in view. Okay, so I happen to get my, my mitts on a leapfrog model. Um, thank you very much, company, for providing. And we're going to uh, have just a quick look. Um, and I'm going to share, present, whatever, uh, share screen. We're not going to take too long, guys. I'm sorry. It's going well. Ah, ah. There we go. Share. Is that visible? Not yet. But wait a second. Just stay there. Uh, there we go. Done. Is it? Is it? Okay. All right. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna look straight down on this thing to show fairly wide space drilling. Yes, there is historic drilling through here, but this is a fairly wide space drill array over a distance. You can see the the scale bar down in the lower right here of about three kilometers. Okay, that's a pretty long stretch to put twenty four holes. Uh, but you know, I I guess the first thing I would point out to everyone is that every single dingle hole in this drill array hit uh, mineralization. Okay, if I zoom in over here, you can see, yeah, there's copper and gold assays in each one of those. In here, yep, yep, yep. And then over here, yep, there's one. And then over here, sure as heck. Okay, so basically all all holes hit some significant mineralization. Okay, now this is a little bit confusing to look at. We're at the south end of the drill array, by the way. All right, uh, it's a little bit confusing because you got both copper and gold uh, on the image here. And I can't separate them the way they sent it, unfortunately. So you just got to kind of put up with things. But basically, the little colored bars, the, the uh, circular colored things on the drill color or drill hole itself, that's gold. And then these little pink wingdings sticking out here, pink and red wingdings, those are copper assays. Okay. This is not a porphyry. Okay. If this was a porphyry, you'd probably just see, you know, relatively continuous, smooth, whatever, you know, uh, value distribution of values. This is an IOCG, in my view, very strong view, okay? Um, there's iron oxides there. Uh, there's sodic alteration, other geo crap that you don't want to hear about right now. But basically, I think this is a Bisbee-type discovery. Okay, now, while the company uh, focused on just a few little isolated areas here, the scale of this system is quite big, okay? Um, this right here is the deepest hole on the project. So I'm going to close that. And it hit pretty good grades. Okay, I would expect to see uh, rather nuggety or potty mineralization in a system like this. It doesn't bother me because Bisbee ended up being a fantastic mine. I think this could. It's very high grade, actually. Okay, in, in, in other words, the way to think about this is 
are pods and, and lenses of very high grade mineralization scattered through broader low grade instead of a porphyry, which would become a more uniformly uh, lower grade mineralization. So it's a, it's a good outcome in my view. Um, if we scroll along and we just look, you know, look at this. There's there's actually some pretty good values. Like look at these holes here, right up at the tippy top. Maybe they drilled away from something. They got away from it down here at the bottom. I don't know. Uh, you know, there's still, you know, I'm still going to take some detail to put this all together. Hopefully the company puts together a few more uh, cross sections and whatnot to help us understand. But even up here at the northern end, we can see some very high grade pods and areas within the drilling and every single hole hit. Okay, so that's that's encouraging in my view. It's got kind of the footprint uh, in the deepest, by the way, that's only 300 meters. Okay, the, this is three kilometers by deepest 300 meters. You think it just magically cuts off at that level? No, um, a system that's three kilometers long ain't gonna cut off where they stop these rolls. I would love to see the company start testing a deeper regime down here to really show that this project has a you know, scale to it, okay? All right, <clears throat> let's go back to the deck. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, whoever's driving the bus here, uh, put that deck back up, unless I'm missing something. One second, here it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, next slide. It's like we need to, there we go. There we go, Barksdale, okay. A while back, I said, you know, I'm going to get my hands dirty and, and going to work with Barksdale to get get stuff going, okay? Get shirt going. That's our motto, all right? Um, we we have inserted into Barksdale uh, an exploration geologist I've worked with for many years, Alan Roberts. He helped me drill spring pole up in uh, Ontario back in the 2009, 10, 11 era, I think. Um, we drilled five point something million ounces. Uh Sharp guy, knows how to operate. He's about my age, very hard to find geologists in this age range right now. But when Alan told me he was available, I said, hello, uh, I got a position for you, buddy. He knows how to drill difficult holes, which is what they encountered down there, difficult drilling conditions. Alan will run circles around us. I'm very confident, and I'm glad to see him take this role. Go to the next slide. Okay, BC, I'm another one I like to get my hands dirty with. Um, look, I pushed them to work with Colorado School of Mines. Uh, in particular, this group, this uh, KSERM group, I can't think of the acronym, what it stands for, but basically it's a bunch of very, very smart professors at Colorado, Colorado School of Mines, along with their graduate students, and they deploy them out into the mining industry to do very, like, you know, um, what they call it, uh, very focused uh exploration advice and, and you know modeling okay and they've done that work here at bcm at, at thompson knowles okay um basically they spent the better part of the past two or three months relogging the core studying things in detail and now they have a very good handle that at at thompson knowles the best vector is probably to the south southwest and this is what we need to, to know so that the company can get back and get some money in the bank and start drilling and doing big things because I'm telling you, I talked to a lot of people and everybody that's looked at the data that's come back from this so far says there is something big here. Okay, very big. These guys are on to a discovery. Sergei Dyakov was the discoverer of Oyu Togoy. He's no dummy. Combining him with these guys and their brain power, um, we have a story to tell now. Go to the next slide. Okay, this is a, a map of the property area. The the circle with the blue dots in there, that's where they drilled uh, both. There's the uh, drilled holes as well as the planned holes that they have in open circles. But then they also extended their their drill permit to this area off to the southwest in the yellow polka dots that you see. Those are all planned drill holes. Okay, why are they down there? Because there was a magnetic anomaly that showed up down there. And thank goodness that they expanded the permitting in there because guess what? Uh, the guys at the Colorado School of Mines found they found that the the copper and the gold and whatnot is trending. It probably uh, goes down in that direction. So th these guys they need to drill more. Go to the next site. The model shows them this. Okay, it basically says that the drilling they have at present is out on the fringe of a scarring system. The porphyry is obviously the purple thing there. The big purple blob is a magma source of these metals. 
and the fluids emanated from those outwards into the limestones surrounding. Okay, but holes TK8, 6, and 14. And by the way, TK8 is a discovery hole. Hands down, it's a 100 gram meter plus hole. Okay, uh, they were on the fringe. Okay, so the, the idea here is they need to work their way back towards the porphyry. Well, where, where's the porphyry? Okay, go to the next slide. Okay, so the guys at School of Mines, they did this modeling, geochemical based modeling that basically says the fluids, the fluid source is down there in the southwest and leaked fluids up towards the area that was drilled. Okay, they need to go back down to the south southwest. I think if they drill a couple holes down there, I think we could see a massive, major discovery. Um, that's my view. Okay, and I'd love to see the company get back on its feet, get some cash in. And drill these holes. All right, go to the next slide. Goliath is drilling. Look, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about him in detail. I'm not going to go through all the targets. This map shows you where they're going to be drilling this year. It's going to be exciting because they got drilling to follow up at Sherbet. That's great. But they're going to test this jackpot target where they hit very, very high grade gold uh, samples. Uh, they got samples off surface last year. They're also going to drill to the north at full contact and Treasure Island as well. This will be, uh, I put a quote in here, this will be a year of discovery, like expansion. This is a project where the trend is always persistently in the right direction. So I think they're, they're going to have a very good this year this year. Go to the next slide. Okay, Kingfisher. Look, I talked about them like a few weeks ago. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to tell you this. Okay, uh, for people that wonder, oh, you know, do you, do you lose interest in, in the company or something if, if they don't hit? Well, yeah, I mean, it's disappointing, okay? But but when we see a young team like Dustin and his team and we see the energy to make what I'll call a pivot, okay, to go from a project that didn't quite work for them to a new project and put all this time and effort in and really cut some really attractive deals to build a commanding land position in the Golden Triangle. I think is brilliant. Okay, so uh, kudos to him. This is now becoming more and more of an exciting story for us, also other shareholders. There's other shareholders in Kingfisher, um, certain gentlemen in Peru who everyone knows on this call, um, who are very excited about what's coming here. Okay, um, I think they they're going to knock it out out of the park. Okay, go to the next slide. We're almost there. Almost there. Okay, SK, a lot of people have asked me what happened with the P2 Gold Agreement. In short, in May or whenever they kind of reached the agreement, I can't remember when it was announced, I think early May, um, it looked like the market was picking up and that there would be access to capital and stuff. And unfortunately, the, that didn't crystallize. I'm not saying, you know, it was a bad move or whatever, but it was just clear that it was going to be a struggle to see the two companies combine and then try to leverage cash, a cash raise, a raise and capital to, to do work um, at this time. And there's some times in life where you just got to go, you know what, uh, let's, let's put things, let's put things on hold a wee bit, but you know, fortunately SK has like 2.4 million. Okay. So what they've done instead is they've asked the exploration team at P2, which by the way, is the same team I talked about uh, Ken and so forth. Uh, that discovered Bruce Jack very nearby, okay, the mega gold deposit. Okay, here we are. We're in a place where you've got an exceptional team that has a bit of cash. We're not going to spend much, like 400000 maybe, to go out and hit the property hard along with some of our existing team members. And we're just going to see what they come up with. This isn't a bad thing. This is good. Okay, go to the next slide. Uh, Newfound had a couple of news releases. One was the acquisition of Lab Gold's Ground. Kudos to them. I mean, you know, now they got control over pretty much the entire gold belt through that region. Uh, but they also announced results from their dr deep drilling. And I want to talk about those in particular. Go to the next slide. Look, this map simply shows, um, it shows the Keats, Lotto, et cetera, gold trend down there towards the bottom center with the blue polka dots. And then the blue ground that's been brought in, uh, that's lab gold. And you can see there's gold occurrences along that. And with that consolidation, now they control much more of the trend. There's just one little gap right there uh, towards the north end of uh, Lotto and stuff. But otherwise, they got the whole shebang. Go to the next slide. Okay, this week they, they talked about some of the deep drilling. This is the first deep drilling that's happened at, 
at the Keats, uh, or sorry, the North Queensway uh, area. And these intercepts that you see here with visible gold, they look exactly like the visible gold we see in the drilling they've done to date up at shallow levels. But these holes are down hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, even a thousand meters. Okay, and they're seeing same style of mineralization at depth. Now, did they hit a home run with these holes? No, but think about it. You, you know, you're basically poking a whole way the heck down there based on maybe your seismic data or whatever. To on the first pass, you know, holes can kind of wander around and do all sorts of things, but on the first pass to hit visible goal like this. That looks just like what you see up at top. That says something. Okay, it says the system's alive and well, and there's much more to be found there. Go to the next slide. Okay, so what they're showing in this image is a long section of the North uh, Queensway um, project, and you can see the areas that have been drilled in red there. That's basically the, the model of the various veins. But now you see the deep holes, and where they've hit mineralization, there's little flags and tags that show you there's mineralization, another double down. Okay, so the depth to the bottom of the red, you double that again, and it's open it up. It's proof that that the goals are. I'm not surprised because these system, they're orogenic. They probably came from 20 kilometers down or something. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see this thing go down even much further. But now we have proof. All right, let's go to the next slide. So it's like this, guys. Uh, think of the plumbing. You know, the fluid's trying to get out of the ground is plumbing, and you have this very complicated plumbing. And up to this point, they drill down, say, to that red line, and those are all the different gold zones. Okay. Now they have, uh, you know, a few holes. I think four holes or whatever between the red and the yellow lines that show the system goes down to that depth, but it will keep going. Okay. That's that's my an, an analog to <laughs> what's going on. At uh, Newfound. All right. Wait, Let's that's go. awesome's live, by the way. No way to describe. <laughs> well, you can, you can also kind of get an understanding. Like if you're drilling the hole, you know, are you going to hit a pipe or are you going to hit a, a, a gap between the pipe? It, they hit some pipes. They nicked or whatever you want to say. They had assays up to 50 something grams, you know, like, hello, you know, that's crazy. <laughs> um, everybody wants instant gratification. Well, guess what? Science doesn't often generate. <laughs> that but whatever go to the next slide okay and i i grabbed this news release right before this is part of the reason we delayed is because i noticed this came out today uh and it's good news in my view okay uh lion one announced they poured um they recovered 3550 ounces of gold uh they poured um the you know there's a series of steps that go through processing but they poured 3250 i think it is or something like that and they got that out of 32,000 tons, so basically a 10,000 per ton. And everybody says, oh, that's kind of low grade. Well, guys, remember that most of this rock, probably the first, there's three months in this quarter, right? So most of that rock, probably the first two months, is actually development rock, which is lower grade. And then just the past three or four weeks, I think they've gotten in the stopes where they're into actual production grade type stuff. But the chart that you see of production increasing is very dramatic. Okay, um, they're at like 15, a root run rate of 1,500 plus ounces per month right now and in increasing. Okay, where that lands, I don't know. But if they, if that trend continues, I think they should have a good uh, outcome here. Now, you know, the thing that always spooks me about uh, companies that are trying the best to get a mine going and they have lenders and stuff, lenders are a pain in the nets, to be frank. And I just, I don't want to see any problems pop up from their lenders. Uh, in the process, okay. Sometimes you know some people can be a little predatory uh, with a company, and I don't want to see that in this case. Anyway, that.